hello and welcome back so in this video we're going to get into our model part okay so I'm going to create a helper class over here which is gonna be our tax number three and this helper class is going to talk to the model and get the data from the model so before I get into Eclipse and I start writing code I want to walk you through to the database right so let's go for it so if you see over here I am right now in my MySQL database and if I'll go into it then you can see over here I have a schema here called uh, called food okay so this is the one I'm talking about so uh, this, in this schema I have a table called food cat so if I'll select if I'll do select star from food cat uh, then I'll find all these items over here so these are the things that we care about okay so we have all our items over here and this particular table has three different rows so right now we are going to write a class and we are, we are going to write a method inside that class to fetch this data from the database alright alright guys so now let's go ahead and let's create our helper class which will talk to the database we can say that's kind of a model alright so I'll go to this SRC folder and I will expand this and here I'm gonna create a class okay so new class and I'll I'll say this class as food cat DB util because it's gonna talk to the DB that's why I'm gonna say it food cat DB util so I'll hit finish here and I'll wait till the class to be created and there we go so inside this class let me zoom it a bit alright so inside this class I'm gonna write a method and that method should fetch all the data from the database alright so to write that particular method I'm gonna create a method here so I'll name this method as get put list right and this method should return me a list alright and it should return me a list of food okay a list of food items okay and this method should be public and let's make it static so that I can access it anywhere from my application alright so right now uh, I'm gonna create an array list here so array list and I'll create a list of food food equal to new array list and I'll return this put over here all right now as you know already so there is some problem with it okay so what is the problem uh, first of all this list is an interface so let me import the java.util.list all right so this goes away so I'm making use of this food over here so now the problem that we have I'm making use of this particular put so put type right so uh, this is kind of a generic items that I'm using so this food is actually a class but Eclipse is saying dude you don't have a class called food so I'm gonna say Eclipse create one class for me name food alright so Eclipse is right now creating a class called food and I'm gonna hit finish here and here we go so it's just created a class called food so why we're creating this cl class called food so so I'm just going to create a POJO class so this is a kind of POJO class and what is a POJO class so if you never heard about it before just think like POJO class is just a normal class having no special feature okay so uh, we are writing the POJO class here just to interact with different variables of this class called food okay how we are going to use it we are going to see it in the later part of our project okay so here I'm going to declare three variables so first of all I'm going to declare uh, a int ID so what are the data that we have in our database so to confirm it let me go to our database and I'll do describe uh, put cat over here I'll copy this paste it here and let me run this 
All right, so I have three things. My ID, item and price. ID is of int type. Item is of string type and the price is a float type. So now let me go back to the Eclipse and int ID, string items, let's say item and float price. All right. So now the next thing that we are going to do, we are just going to make all this variable private because that's what your POJO rule says. If you are creating a POJO class, just make all your variables private just to just somebody can't access all this variable outside of a class. And now we are going to create a constructor over here. So I'm going to go to source and let me click this one generate constructor using field. So I'm gonna hit OK here. And this is just going to uh, generate a constructor for me all right all right so the next thing is I am going to generate the getters and setters just to access all these variables okay so again I'm going to use Eclipse tricks I am going to go to source and generate getters and setters again I'm gonna select all and I'll hit OK and there you go so we have all our getters and setters ready right now. All right. So our food class is ready. Uh, so this is just a normal class, right? We have one constructor, all our getters and setters, and all these variables here. All right. So now let me go back to our to our helper class. All right. So right now here, I'm going to do some, some database operation. All right. So the first thing is to interact to my database, I should uh, know the username, the password, and the URL of it. Okay, so here in this case, I'm using the MySQL database, so I'm going to use everything related to MySQL, right? And to talk to this database, I need the MySQL jar, right? So let me copy and paste the MySQL jar from my file system to my library here. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste it to here. So let me go to my file system. So here I'm going to copy this MySQL connector. So if you are using SQL Server or Oracle, copy the relative jar and paste it to the lib folder here. Okay, so I got the MySQL jar over here. So uh, the first thing is uh, before I will go and develop this thing, I need my connection URL, my username and password. So let me uh, type this in. All right, so uh, this is my uh, connection URL, my username and password, all right? So the first thing that I'm gonna do over here right now, I'm going to load the driver. So load the MySQL driver. Then I'm going to get the connection. And once I get the connection, I'm going to create a statement. And once I'm done with creating the statement, I'm gonna execute the statement and loop over the result set. All right. Okay. So this is uh, what I need to do right now. Okay. So first of all, let me uh, load the MySQL driver. So I'll do class dot for name. So class here and dot for name. And I'm going to put the driver class name here. So this is com.mysql.jdbc.driver. Right? And let's put a semicolon here. So my class has been loaded up. And this is right now going to throw some exception. Let me throw to the declaration. So here it is. All right. So the next thing, I'll get the connection. So I'll write driver manager dot get connection oops driver manager dot get connection and I'm going to give my URL my username and my password here right so these are the things that I have already set it over here so I'm just I know putting the URL username and password over here okay so now it's again going to throw me some error and uh, let me fix that by 
adding it to the throat I mean to the method declaration okay so there you go so the next thing is we're gonna create a statement here but before that let me handle the return type of it so let me say connection con equal to all right now let me say it uh, con dot create statement so I'll say it's statement so because it's return type is going to be statement and I'm going to use up this Java dot SQL and I'll make it statement here and there oops stmt let me say it because I made a spelling mistake there and well so I got the statement and once I got the statement here then I am going to execute query I'm going to get all the data from my database so I'm going to do a select star from food cat so to make sure this food cat is the table name that I do have in my database okay so you can see it over here so this food cat is actually my table name right okay all right so the next thing is once I run this query I will get the result set right so let me write the result set here because this is going to return me a result set result set r is equal to this and now I'm gonna loop over this result set here and going to page all the data from each of my columns right so I'm gonna use a while loop over here and I'm gonna make use of this rs dot next so if there will be a next element so it's gonna fetch it and right now I'm going to paste the data from a specific column so rs dot get int okay and I'll give the column index of one I'm I'm using this get int over here because to make sure this ID is of int type okay now this item is of is of string type and this, this price is a float type so uh, let me accordingly do that so int ID let me store it first and after that I'll do rs dot get string the column index is 2 because this is our second column and our second column is going to return me the string I mean the food item I'm sorry I can write it as item and the third thing that I'm gonna fetch it from here is gonna be the uh, the third column and this is gonna be the price so this price I've stored it as the float here so I'm gonna make use of that get float and I'm gonna store it inside a float variable so float price right so once I get everything over here I got the ID I got the item here I got the price here okay I got everything right now so the next thing that I'm gonna do over here I'm going to create a food class object so food I'm gonna use this one the class that I've created few minutes back the pojo class and I'll give it a reference f equal to new put and I'm gonna make use of this constructor right now and I'm going to insert everything that I get it over here ID item and price so I'm gonna insert everything to my constructor and I'm gonna create a put class object and the next thing that I'm gonna do I have already created the array list over here so I'm just going to add this to the array list so put dot add and I'm gonna make use of this F over here so I'm adding the things to the list right so this put is actually this array list object right so it's pretty clear right now okay so I'm just paging the data and I'm creating a put class object use my constructor to create an object and once the object is getting created I'm going to uh, I mean insert it to the array list object all right so here we go so it's, it's done right now and in the end I'm actually returning the put over here so now it looks good so this is actually the whole method that we have created all right so this is going to talk to our database and going to face the data from the database all right so the next thing over here is that I'm going to use this method inside my controller servlet so that inside my controller my controller can get the data from the uh, database all right by using make use of this particular method here so now I'm going to go over my controller here and I'm going to get rid of this line and the next thing that I'm going to do over here is I'm going to call this method here okay the method that I've developed 
few minutes back. The method name is get food list and this is a static method. So I can call it by using the class name. So my class name is food cat db util. So let me type it here food cat db util dot get food list. Now this is going to give me the uh, list of food. Now this is going to return me a list of food now let me type that in so list i'm going to import this and i'm going to use the generic type as food and let me say it as food items here and there we go and now this is going to throw me some exception so i'm going to use a multi try cache block here uh, so that it will just wrap it over here and there we go so the problem with JDBC is that, right? We are using this try and cache block to get rid of all those exceptions. So our core doesn't look so good over here, but this is what we need to do. All right, so now the next thing is, once we get our put items over here, we need to send this thing to our JSP page over here. Okay, so we are using the request dispatcher. No problem with that, but before sending it to the JSP page, we just need to uh, use the set attribute over here just to store these things request dot set attribute and I'm going to give it a name let's say it put items and I'm going to control C and control V it over here because this is the things that I want to send it to my JSP page okay so now when a request will come to my servlet first of all it is going to uh, you know talk to the database and it is going to get the data from the database and once it is going to get the data from the database this is going to set the thing to the request object and gonna redirect um, I mean it's gonna send again the request to the JSP page now from the JSP page here now we are going to get all the data right now it is our responsibility is to uh, loop over all the data and we are going to present this data to our user in a systematic, in a designed way. Okay, so let's see how we are going to do it.